All right, we're back here for our final feature match of the night for week five. We got uh, Zeke here uh, hanging out with me, and he's about to tell us what's going on in uh, Sawyer's hand as we get the matchup started here against Mitch. Uh, we've got lots of colors. We've got a mountain of forest and the Stramorphic Expanse. In hand, we've got a bunch of green spells and a black lamp pad. I suspect we'll get a swamp like this with lamp pad. Yep. Uh, right, watchdog. Looks like we're going to start off with a watchdog. Yeah, seems good. Yeah, so we got two, two, uh, two pretty, pretty uh, big heavyweights here in our league with uh, Mitch, who's uh, been around since the server started, frequent uh, broadcast partner for top eights and all that, and uh, Sawyer, who's a, a league winner and has, uh, I think, the second most top eights or something like that. So. Uh, Two very, very good players here. Mitch is, I did catch a look at his deck before. He is playing a white-black deck, so just two colors. Um, but, uh, and it's very evenly matched as far as uh, where they are in the standings. They're just, they're 17th and 18th right now. They both have the same amount of wins. Their dread is very close. Uh, Mitch is at 66 and Sawyer is at 68, I believe. So um, should be a very, very evenly matched game between uh, two good players. Like for turn three, we're gonna get the centipede down, get another land, and that's and that should probably fix all of his mana basically for the foreseeable future, I imagine. Yeah, I think we've already got all the colors I'm seeing in the deck. It seems to be chunked. Okay. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, we've got a land in hand also, but I think he just wants to hit the land drops. Yeah, centipede has been really, really strong. Like normally, this like three mana. 2-2 two, two that goes and gets a land has, like, basically always been an uncommon. But, uh, yeah. We're getting a common here. That's just scary when it gets turned online, although we're very far from that. Yeah, so not too, too much of great interest going on for Mitch here. He has a jump scare in hand. He has a banish, uh, banishing light, so that's from Theros. He has emerged from the cocoon, which is the, uh, the regeneration spell, he's got four lands. So nothing of great impact yet. He's got an exercise that he's um, surveilled on top here. So basically interaction is what he has. He says, you know what, I'm just going to keep this thing alive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mitch doesn't have too much else going. Like, he doesn't have a creature in hand, and his next spell that he's drawing is not a creature. So he says, might as well just keep my creature alive for, for the time being. Yeah. Here we are probably playing a skin ripper, I'd imagine. That's a good one. And then maybe a removal spell. Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah, let's attack with the dog. See what he decides to do here. So is he, does he does it look like he's playing mostly green red or mostly green black or just even mix of all the colors? So I far guess. it seems pretty even. Okay. I guess we'll see inside boarding uh yeah. Exactly what's up. Yeah, so... Uh, I noticed a few less swamps when he was uh, doing his... Okay. Search. So I suspect that's the... Oh, that's a, that's the easiest surveillance of the graveyard uh, in a while, because he's he, he found a, a card that has escape. Land. Oh. With the Mogus' oh. favor. He's considering putting it on top, just because yep. it, it kills the uh, the watchdog straight up. But, I mean, if you put it in the graveyard, I wouldn't fault him either, just because it has escape. It's an aura that gives plus uh, two. Uh, on the already, nice one. Yeah. Yeah, he says, let me uh, let me just. I, I don't, clean up I don't like the Skin Ripper. I know Sawyer is a steal and sack player. <laughs> we've seen we've seen Sawyer make use of uh, you know sacrifice decks before. So uh, Skin Ripper is very dangerous, even more so in the hands of uh, Sawyer, I would say. And it would have gone very nice with this land pad, which we're about to play. But maybe we're not playing. Is that the maybe land pad we're... of uh, Death's Vigil? Is that the one? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. That card, uh... Yeah. That card, like... It, that card has stood the test of time, I think. Like, even though it's from Theros, which a lot of the cards don't measure up that well. Like, this one actually... Like it, it, it has all the right abilities on it. Like it's 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 any color of mana to activate. It doesn't tap. It's instant speed. It can sack itself. Like it has it. They turn the knobs basically, uh, for that yeah. one. The one thing it's missing is it can't sack an enchantment. No, but 
I mean, still pretty good. And uh, oh, for sure. There was a there was a very memorable game in the plane chase top eight when Sawyer had the lamp pad in play and he sacked his entire board to drain his opponent, who then cast Tamio safekeeping just to gain two life. Because <laughs> he he had another drain or two. He had another. He had like a. I think it was called Cruel Celebrant. So there might be. So he was draining here. Yeah, he just it's just the Mogus's favor. The Mogus's favor can kill off anything that blocks the spear. Yeah. But uh, not too much else going on here. Just the exercise and the emerge from the cocoon. And I mean, Sorry just gets to sack his watchdog to, to get a drain in, which is like, you know. Yeah. Pretty good. And a surveil, so. I mean, the Mogus' uh, favor. I think I, we're going to keep that branch snapper. I feel like he needed a bit more action than a Mogus' favor when he surveilled that, because you could just throw that in the graveyard and cast it eventually. I think he's going to exercise the uh, the enchantment here. Yeah, he, he he respects that card enough to, to use an exercise on it. That we're just slamming this branch snapper. That is going to be a big problem. Because we just got a reanimation spell and a swamp in hand, so that might that might just more or less end the game depending on uh, what Mitch can draw for turn here. And another fear of surveillance is not going to be nearly good enough. And he is surveilling here, I guess, just as a desperation play. I mean, we also didn't block the last couple times. So, I mean, also, uh, he's at 17. He's under no obligation to, yeah. to care about blocking this. Yeah, he just says, I don't know what you have, but I don't really care. I got a 7-6 trade. I'm not risking this branch snapper yet. Yeah, I can just attack with it, and then and then you can do whatever you were planning to do to it, which, which for my, I know from looking at his hand, he's not planning to do anything. So, Well, we also have a removal spell in hand, so it might be that we were going to just... Yeah, this, yeah, we might be getting getting down to uh, game two in a moment, but uh, we'll see if Mitch gets to have another draw, but it sounds like he might not. He can only get rid of, like, with what's in hand, he's not dead on board. He's uh, jumping. <laughs> yeah, so he's trying to figure out if he wants to Mogus favor, like, his creature, or to give it plus, can you get a 4-1? That's what he's doing. I mean, right? that's that's worse against the branch snapper. He does branch snapper. trade for the branch snapper. Uh, like a trade for it now. Yeah, I guess he won't die. He'll go to one if if Sawyer lets that happen, which sounds like he might not. I doubt it. We've got a coordinated club, right? So that's just going to... Okay. Let's see. What else did yeah, what else did he draw? A forest. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Mitch knows it's not looking good here. He can chump and go to two, and then basically not really have an out. So yeah, uh, you know, white black deck for Mitch. Uh, good amount of cheap plays, a few rares. You know, what's going on? Surprised he didn't uh, use next start because he could have just taken it, gone to one. Yeah, don't looking through his deck. I'm not sure if there's anything that could have actually got him back in it. Because even if he yeah. kills the branch snapper, there's still the brood spinner. And so he's still True. dead I to that. Probably sacked to make a bunch of creatures. Was well, no, he'd be he'd, he'd be at creature. one. He'd be at one. So the brood he spinner would be lethal. Four one. Well, no, he had the four one still then. Oh, right. Yeah, it was uh, it was a big mess either way. So. Sure. Didn't look like he did sad. too much sideboarding. He looked he looked at the card Sawyer played, and he concluded that whatever he had in his deck already was uh, what he wants to go with. Which, coming from somebody who uh, doesn't do too much sideboarding, is a very fair assessment. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Sawyer, on the other hand, seems to be checking it over Mitch's pool. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, very studious as far as that goes. So, And, and it pays off, right? <laughs> Yeah, so I, I know he's uh, he usually has the the pool open during the game, during sideboarding, figure out you know what some of the key cards might be, 
or more more importantly, what, what, what some of the what, what, what the dead times. cards are also, right? Yeah, yeah. He tapped over it a couple of times, especially when they were attacking with the uh, creature, trying to figure out what they should have. Yeah, the answer was he didn't have anything. He was just he was just bluffing. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I give I, I give I give Mitch credit for the for 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 those attacks because I don't know I, I don't know if I if I'm if I could be doing that <laughs> if I'm playing my my opponent has a seven six I have a two two I'm just attacking with reckless abandon when I'm when I'm behind but uh, yeah he he, so... he he got through whatever 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 tactic he was using I mean at least worked to uh, have him creature not be blocked. Like yeah, black is a bit of a splash, and there's also a very light white splash just for an exercise of trap the screen. Okay, so he's uh, splashing around here, which is uh, not an uncommon sight on the uh, in the streets of Duskborn League, especially when your dread is pretty high. Yeah, I mean 68, 66, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's sixty-eight. Yeah, still sideboarding. I'm not sure if white saw will work. Looks like we're cutting our own Mogus favor, though. Oh, the Mogus favor? Well, that was ours. <clears throat> Mitch is putting a bunch of question marks in the uh, friend request box, indicating he'd like to know what, what's going on. And the answer is his opponent's sideboarding. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is one of the sometimes, sometimes downsides of long sideboarding is you know just not uh, you know the the viewers are just sort of sitting there while somebody sideboards for a while, but uh, you know that's uh, you know with, with without timers it's well within people's rights to take as long as they need to a sideboard, even if Mitch likes to type his question marks and move his cursor around his screen uh, wildly as he's doing. <laughs> Uh, so how's everybody doing? Is what he wants to know. <laughs> uh, I'm doing all right. How about yourself? Ah, he said, "Oh, cool." As if uh, he knew exactly what we answered. All right. It's like we're done, and uh, yeah, game two. We're in, and uh, okay. Nice hand here for Mitch. What's uh, What's Sawyer looking at over there? I mean, I think it seems pretty capable, although we only have two spells. But we do have all three colors of land, although we have the center gate, right. which can get the fourth one, and we've got a trap in the screen. So right. I think we keep it, but it's a bit slow. We, we, we got a couple of rares here for, for Mitch, so maybe he can make use of that. He's got the Unstoppable although Slasher. Looks like Sawyer's really considering shoving it back. Yeah, okay. shoved it back. Maybe he just figured it was just not enough action. Uh, this time we've got a Final Vengeance, a Watchdog, and the Green Open Lord, along with. Well, we had all colors of mana, but we're putting our Black Source at the bottom. Okay, interesting. Or no, we still have the Black Source. Yeah, so Mitch, is, Mitch has got the Unstoppable yeah. Slasher. He's got a Farika Spawn, which was a uh, uncommon from Theros, and he's got the Black Overlord in his hand as well. So we have a good answer to the uh, Slasher and. Final he's just going to run out the Black Overlord here. Pretty high chance he, he's going to hit a creature. Putting Split yeah. Up in the graveyard. Don't always love to see that, but uh, he gets to get a creature back here. Deciding whether he wants to get the 2-drop or the 7-drop. I was going to say, Sammy takes the 2-drop. Uh, oh, no. We took no he took the, I mean, he, he has a, a play on 3 and 4, so just figures I'll just do that. I'll just do that, and I'll build up to this uh, to this seven drop. Uh, we're considering keeping it because it's our second green source for this uh, Overlord. Yeah, that seems uh, like a very fair. We have a lot move. of lands in hand. Oh, okay. But none of them have second green source, so it looks like we're done in it. Nope. Thinking about it still actually. The the green Overlord. It's what it costs one green green to. Uh, yeah. To impending. Or three green, green He's changing the language to uh, some sort of uh, Japanese. 
Mitch has. So all the cards are now Japanese, which is uh, great, great, great for the viewership. And now, and now he has to figure out how to switch it back. Okay, he figured it out. <laughs> We're definitely getting our black source down this turn because it will be tapped, and next turn we can find a vengeance. I think th I think this is Mitch indicating he he would like the game to go a little faster, but <laughs> nothing you can do about that. All right, so uh, he's free to attack with his unstoppable slasher, but it might not uh, might not be that that great to do so. Yeah, I was watching. Uh, I was watching the the World Championship, and uh, Unstoppable Slasher was doing some absolute nonsense in uh, standard with uh, the Blood Letter of Aklazots, which is just like an insta kill. Because yeah. Blood Letter of Aklazots says like whenever an opponent uh, takes damage or whatever, they lose that much life or something like that. Basically, it doubles all your your, your life loss, and uh, so it's a it's a it's a insta kill, <laughs> but. Uh, also very good in limited. That seems to be a great spot. No, and uh, I mean, Mitch is, he's working up to his Shroud Stomper here. He's, he's, he's got the sixth line yeah. in hand. And he's got a solid play here with the Fear of Immobility, so. And then in two turns, he gets to attack with the Overlord, and uh, things are looking up here. Well, it's a draw. Nowhere to run. I mean, so that can kill the slasher permanently. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, and then we can final vengeance the fear of immortality, maybe, or we just hang up this final vengeance still. Okay, so is, is he is he just taking seven this turn, or does he have something to stop? No, we're just taking seven. I think he just wants it to hit the overlord. I assume. Really good draw so here. Next turn. Really good draw drawing the six drop here. Just perfect card to draw. And uh, Sawyer's going to need quite a lot here, and uh, he does nope. not have it. So we're not. Yeah, just I mean, yeah, hand was slow. Mitch just I mean, Mitch he went he just played a three drop, four drop, a five drop, like and it was good enough. <laughs> yeah. And then a six drop, and the opponent just was a little slow. I mean, he he had, he had a he had a turn two play as well with the uh, Overlord, so yeah, he just used all his mana, cast spells, opponent cast less spells. Yeah, that's my expert analysis. <laughs> he casted more spells. Through far too many lands. So this time he is taking a bit of a closer look at his sideboard. It looks like he's about to just submit regardless, but he uh, he peered a bit longer, which uh, last time he spent about 10 seconds. This time it was somewhere in the 15 to 20 second range before uh, clicking done. <laughs> Like we keep checking back through pools. Yeah, I mean, Mitch's deck is not uh, like a you know reanimator or anything. He has a couple of reanimate spells, but it's just white black. He has some good rares, as we saw. Just play a bunch of cheap creatures, some removal. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty straightforward strategy here. Checking out what enchantments we have on our sideboard. Or anything with the word enchanted in it, actually. And Mitch wants to know who faces Valgavoth with about 12 H's at the end of Valgavoth. I don't know. We'll find out. I think I think he wants a piece of the demon. What's the demon's record so far? Uh, demon has... Steven has only lost four times. So we're on week five, so that means he's played 14 matches, I guess. So 10 and four. Steven's been uh, been crushing crushing dreams. Happy Halloween to you too, Mitch, is what he, what he wrote. Are you looking forward to Halloween? <laughs> I know Discord is looking forward to Halloween with these spooky sounds when people are coming in and out of chat. Oh. 
and just as a dagger to me, just as just as Sawyer went in, he he put a heart and alchemy as his last uh, message in the friend request box. <laughs> he, he he does enjoy his alchemy cards for some unforsaken known reason. <laughs> like we're keeping this, we are missing three. But... Green seems important to his deck. Yeah. But I, yeah. I know Sawyer is a player that absolutely hates the mulligan, so more, more so than most, I would say. Oof. Well, we do have an answer to the fear of surveillance. Okay. But does he have other castable spells at this time? Nope. Right. That was our last castable spell. Yeah, so for Mitch, he has two fear of immobilities. That's the five drop. He has a Farika spawn, which he can cast next turn. He's got Withering oh, Torment, that... which he can use to get rid of a threat. And he's got the Surgical Suite Hospital Room. Uh, so he can deploy a Farika spawn next turn if you if he wishes. He could kill a threat here with the torment. Does it sound? Does, did he find his uh, land here? Uh, we didn't find a land, but we did find a forest cycler. So we're going to do that. Okay. He said, "I don't know what else he's got, but I'm just going to get rid of this gremlin. I don't want him to get the value from it." And we can even play a one drop. Again. Okay, that is a. That was a well-constructed turn there. Yeah. Got a Farika spawn here. So this is just... Uh, right now, it's just a 4-mana 3-4, but you can escape it from the graveyard. It comes back as a 5-6, and an opponent has to sacrifice a creature. I assume we're probably getting down a centipede here to get land number 4. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, again, a, a little slow on the development here, but Mitch has not been able to punish him, so he's just... Uh, and then... He's got. We have a Crowan Warrior to take control of something. Oh, a Crowan Warrior. Yeah, that's a that's a fun one. Yeah, got one of those in my. Ooh. I mean, he does get to just start playing Fear of Immobilities here. Like he has two in hand, and that can that can be pretty useful. So he is starting to mount a little bit of pressure, at least here. And yeah, I was about to say that artifact creature must give him uh, delirium. So delirium's online, and we just have waltz of rage, so not looking too hot yeah, on this we, board. <laughs> we the... Well, we don't have a land for it yet, but eventually it might be able to take care of it. Might just cast his. Yeah, I was about to say might just cast the. Yeah. More here. Uh, so that's the plan. So I believe the second uh, the uh, second stage agree. says that you must uh, opponents must attack. It does. You might just want to play trapped in the screen to just get rid of this thing, the yeah, crow and war. It's not bad because it just gives you your fear back immediately. Yeah, I mean you can't attack with it, but it's better than yeah. the alternative, which is. You, know, yeah. you, have to, you have to attack your creature into a situation where it just dies. <laughs> and then Sawyer might might even be able to sack the creature as well before he gives it back. So kind of a big no, decision here if he just wants to kind of ignore the Akron War and just play Fury Mobility, or if he does want to just get rid of it right away. Get his creature back and attack. Yeah, taking a moment to ponder here. This is a Pretty significant decision. I, I know he likes to be mana efficient, so that would be playing the fear of immor immortality would be the. I mean, the fear of immortality is not bad. It stops his fear from blocking, which or, or immobility. Sorry, but yeah. Yeah, not immortality. but it means the spawn can get in, and then he's not getting cracked back with that bad fear, and then the next turn he gets his fear back. Yeah, yeah, he is really like he's 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 picked up both of them as if he was going to cast them, both the trapped in the screen and the fear. So, pretty big decision here of what he wants to do, and I think he said I'm going to put more things on board. I don't hate that. Both just trying to be the aggressive one. Yeah, I mean, he. I think both of these players are players that that tend to want to be assertive. I mean. You know, 
they, yeah. they they also know when to slow down, but uh, I think a lot a lot of their success in the league has been with uh, assertive strategies. Yeah, so now it's on level. Now the chapter it's on chapter two, which means uh, all of Mitch's creatures have to attack. Yeah. Which means that either Sawyer could get good blocks, or he could just. Uh, let them stay tapped for the third chapter, which is each tapped creature deals damage equal to its power to itself. Yep. So, so that spawn survives, right? Yep. So the spawn having a higher toughness than power is uh, good, I suppose, but it also could just get eaten by something larger if Sawyer can uh, produce that. All right. Looks like we're not going to the Waltz of Rage. Oh, maybe. I mean, Waltz of Rage would be pretty good. He's looking at the gremlin. Okay. And he's going to gremlin into the center. Okay. Which, I mean, that makes his blocks. So he can double block both. Yeah, we get some nice uh, card selection here between the surveil and the uh, rummage. Yeah. It feels, like, it feels like they just put surveil and scry on like everything nowadays. <laughs> like it's like uh, there's so much, so much smoothing in the game nowadays. All right, so you actually discard like the Waltz of Rage. Okay. Okay, there's a... We uh, took a Gallia. Okay. All right, so there's a Banishing Light now, as well as the Trapped in the screen. So you could play one or both of those. But problem is he absolutely must attack, which is uh, a bit of a pain. And he does not have anything to uh, break up double blocks. I mean, if he just removes the two three threes, then there's one good double block. Yeah, I'm not sure he wants to just send all his removal at these three threes right now. Looks like he's ready to go to combat. He's about to click next. He is going to get the spear back. You don't have to wait a second. It's just... Unless we get something on draw stuff, but I doubt. Yeah, so they must attack. All right, he's going to triple block on the 4-4, four, four, which basically is going to negate more or less the last chapter of the uh, the saga. It's not. It's not actually going to kill anything. Yeah. That's an interesting block. Yeah, he didn't want to kill the Freak of Spawn just because of the escape. I guess. But I feel like that 4 4 is dying anyway, right? Yep. So I think he's considering Banishing Light. Got to be on the Spider. 5 1 1 Flyers is uh, not what he wants to see. And he's going to trap in the screen here, so... Uh, wait, why are we trapping in the screen the uh, Crone War? <laughs> I don't know! That, I don't think that does... I think the card... It prevents you from getting your guy untapped back. I, I guess? I mean, it's worse than just... Yeah, no, you know. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if he intended to do that. Maybe, maybe he thought just, like, it destroys all tapped creatures or something. He didn't want to lose his Freak of Spawn for nothing, but it actually, the Freak of Spawn would survive, I believe, if I remember yeah. all the words on that card, and there are many words on it. Hmm. We drew a Dragon Fire, which doesn't actually deal with anything currently, but... I mean, it's a way to stop the Freak of Spawn from escaping, but it, it probably means you're going to have to spend two cards to do it. But I mean... It might not be the worst thing because if it comes back, it makes you. Although sack, actually, I guess if cards. the uh, anyway. if the Acrone War had gone off, actually that would have been perfect. Yeah, he would have actually been able to dragon fire. So maybe this uh, move that we're not sure why it happened. Maybe it's it's not going to be the worst thing for him. But uh, like we're uh, under the skin, such a premium skin. card. We're just going to put a small thing as the creature. 
Mitch is now taking a long read at the uh, at Crow and War. I think uh, I think he may be starting to realize. Yeah. Oops, he says in the uh, in his friend request box here. Yeah, I think he's now realizing that it's not destroy all tap creatures. It's uh, they deal damage even though power. I think he's realizing he might he might not have wanted to uh, cast a trap to the screen targeting a card that was not going to have any further impact on the game. <coughs> like we're just getting a removal spell. Yep, that works. I mean, uh, you know, Mitch sees it coming now, so it's not going to be. Uh, a, it's like it shouldn't it shouldn't end up being a, a blowout of any kind. But it basically prevents them attacking, I guess, then. Okay, so he's drawn a swamp here. He has, he has a surgical suite hospital room. I don't think he has any targets to get back with the uh, the hospital room. So he knows he can't attack because of the nowhere to run, so he just has to... I mean, well, he, he's, 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 he's going to have to use it. He's going to have to make his opponent use it at some point. You know, it could be it could be Sawyer's uh, envisioning, uh, you know, saving it for some specific creatures that he's seen already or that he knows his opponent has. Looks like we're into Italian now. So he's got a Palude in hand, which is a swamp. Yeah. We're... We've got an etched cornfield, which is the green light duel. It's a Gallia. Yeah. Dragon Fire, and a nowhere. I don't know what any of those cards are in Italian. But I know the Farika spawn is a uh, progeny di Farika. Like we're just gonna get in and, uh... and the creature is Blocante. I'm uh, learn learning Italian little by little here. It says I'm gonna I'm gonna try and eat both, make, like requiring that you have two things to really, really hurt me here. Because unless you have two things, I'm okay with this. So we got nowhere to run or uh, Nessuni via de Fugia. Yeah. I apologize to our Italian uh, speaking viewers here. Scorching Dragonfire was about four words in Italian, so I'm not even going to bother with that. And here comes Gallia. Gallia uh, della Danza Interminable. There you go. The endless dance. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, emerge from the cocoon. Decent draw here. Oh. Pretty decent. Anything? Uh, anything interesting under the manifest there? No, it's a swamp. Okay. So yeah, we sent the dice and we just play it. Oh. Sento piedi spinofago. Yeah, you know how it is. He's uh, keeping us, uh, I guess, I guess, somewhat entertained. All right, he's got a he's got a unicorn here. I believe it's a it's a four and a white for a four four. Whenever basically your constellation, whenever an enchantment comes oh, in, constellation to tap something, you tap yeah, something. So it's uh, it's not quite it's not quite eerie. Eerie is like just like a, a better constellation essentially. Yeah. We just drew another forest, so we don't really have anything going on. I oh, think. Looks like he's changing uh, back to English. Looks like we had our fun with the uh, Gallia of the uh, Interminable Dance. Yeah. All right. He says. Uh, so I thought we're just trying to trigger Gallia. I feel like. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, he's gonna he's gonna get some damage in, but he is gonna lose a couple creatures in the meantime. I'd be blocking the uh, three three in the Gallia most likely. Although you might be scared of the face down at nine health. Yeah, I mean the only thing I'd like, like be really scared of that is like a common in the set would be like a seven six. That would be pretty bad for me. Or pretty bad for him. Well we've got a wait for right, well, that, that's we've a five, got five. Another centipede in our hand. Uh that is 
I couldn't tell if you put the land or the spell in play, but it's not a creature. Uh, land went into the graveyard, so I guess it was... Uh... So it's the clobbering. Okay. Looks like we're thinking about discarding the centipede. Right. Yeah, so he's just been, uh, you know, oh. he threw away a couple of creatures to uh, to whittle the life total down, and uh, it's paying, paying dividends here because Mitch just has two uh, swamps in his hand. We drew a uh, fight enchantment, so I think that's just going to take one of them down. And I mean, this surgical suite has basically just been a card that has done nothing this game. Like, he played the hospital room half, never attacked, did not have a creature to get back with the surgical suite, so... Unfortunately, that was a dead card, and then trapping in the screen the Akron War when it wasn't going to have really uh, any further huge effects was uh, also not great for him, and uh, looks like uh, we may be coming to a conclusion here. Mitch at one life needs to... I mean, he does have split up, but even that's just not... Is that going to kill all three, then? No, he's just... An innocuous rat is going to be just that uh, highly... Highly innocuous. He's going to open his room for no value and uh, going to pack it in here. So congratulations to Sawyer for taking down our final feature match of the night. And we'll be back momentarily for his uh, his battle against the big bad demon. Oh. 